everyone, it's Bailey. Whoa, that coming in hot. Take a step back, cool it off. Hey everyone, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today's video is gonna be, I mean, it's predictable. It's the end of the month. It's gonna be all about my monthly beauty favorites. Let's just go ahead and dive in. For foundation, I've been hopping around this month. I still very much love my Sunday Riley The Influencer Foundation, but I've also been trying uh, the Rimmel Lasting Finish 24 Hour Breathable Foundation. This was a, I, I liked it surprisingly, despite the fact that it's kind of a medium coverage foundation. I talked about it when I did a full kind of what's new at Rimmel video this week that I will link, uh, check the eye or the description box below. I don't know that it's gonna become like all time favorite status, but wanted to mention it as it's something I've been using lately. And then even more recently, in including today, I've been trying the Revlon Colorstay Full Coverage Foundation. Mine is in the shade 240. And I've had kind of, not that this is supposed to be a review, but just in a nutshell, I've had mixed experiences with this. So stay tuned for a video talking about it later. Let me know if you have any questions about it below. But I'm loving how it looks today, but in the past, it just, I'm not sure if it's the stuff I wear underneath, what I'm setting it with, you know, what's up with it, but I've just had some inconsistent wear. So not to be boring, but it's pretty much still all about the Influencer Foundation. Brows are kind of predictable too, especially since this month I did do a video about my four favorite drugstore brow products. Um, it's the CoverGirl Ultra Fine Brow Pencil in the shade Soft Brown. Use that, I just love how thin this is to create a, a brow that feels filled in, but because it's so fine, you can get those nice ultra fine hair-like structures. So you get that thick appearance without feeling overdone or like you just took a large crayon and drew uh, inside your eye line. <laughs> Eye lines? We'll go with it. Then to set them, I've been reaching for the L'Oreal uh, Brow Stylist Boost and Set in the shade Dark Brunette. As I mentioned this before, I kind of alternate between this and Light Brunette, if that's what the lighter shade of this is called. Just kind of depends on the day, the look, and frankly, which one is closest. But these are my dream team because between them, I have the fill portion and kind of get cleaning up the edges of my brows. And then this helps add a little bit more volume because it's a fibrous mascara, as well as tinting them and setting them in place so they hold their shape all day. Then for what I've actually been wearing on my eyes themselves. Um, I've been digging this CoverGirl Lid Lockup Primer, and I mentioned this in what will or is probably the video that just went up before this, which was a review of an awful primer. If you want to go check that out, but you really don't have to, just know that this one's good. But I mentioned it there, worth mentioning it again here since I have been using it pretty much for the duration of the month. CoverGirl sent this to me when um, a lot of you probably saw on Instagram, a lot of people were getting as press like these huge CoverGirl kits. And so this came in that. Kind of just started using it to see what it was all about. And also probably I put my makeup away. And that tends to be when I try new stuff because not that I do it intentionally, but I think subconsciously I put everything away, even the stuff that I'm using so that when I go to sit down and do my makeup, Makeup, I have to reach for something new. The mind tricks we play on ourselves, you know? But essentially I picked it up and haven't stopped using it. It's a really nice thin formula. I just apply it directly to my lids, blend it out, and then it maintains a little bit of a tacky texture, which I personally really like for really grabbing onto eyeshadows. A couple of you had questions in that last video asking about, you know, if it makes it, the shadows perform weird, if they skip. Honestly, it does skip if I don't let it dry down enough. I find that the, the, when it's super tacky, it's best for applying something like a pigment or a shimmer or a glitter or something like that. If you just want to apply a regular old eyeshadow, give it a little bit more time to dry down before you go in. Otherwise, if you're working strictly with mattes or something that's prone to skipping in general, yes, it is because this is a stickier base, you'll find that your brush kind of skips over it a little bit. So just let it dry down a little bit longer than you might otherwise. Then for eyeshadow, I've so been loving the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. I'm wearing it on my eyes today and then in actually the past couple of videos I've been wearing it because I'm doing like a three or four and one tutorial. Not sure how many looks I'll try and shove in there, but this will definitely be in there. And actually you guys picked this look. I thought it'd be kind of interesting to do a, not necessarily an Instagram, well kind of an Instagram chooses my makeup, but instead of doing the full face, I posted a picture of the palette itself. And then you guys X'd out the shadows you wanted me to use and then DM me the image. And uh, that, yeah, that's how this look came to be. And funny enough, I, I was so glad I asked because so many of you guys said the same few shades. That's the look I got. So I thought it was super fun. We'll probably do it more on Instagram if you wanna go partake in it there. But all that aside, 
I have been loving the selection of colors in here. It's a good mix of mattes and shimmers. Obviously, Urban Decay crushes it with the shimmers. A cup, actually, there aren't a ton of like overt glittery shades. Now, some of them have the micro glitters, I think is what they're called. This stranded shade up here has a tiny hint of it. It reminds me a lot of, was it Midnight Cowboy that was a strong metallic champagne shade, but then had like also champagne glitter in it. This reminds me a lot of that, but with way less glitter. So probably good for you who were not a fan of the glitter. And on top of that, I just love how many looks you can create from this, how compact the palette is. You get a nice big mirror. It's so slim for travel, which is, I mean, the premise behind On the Run. And I gotta be honest, guys, this might be my favorite Urban Decay palette. They came out recently with the Beach Palette, which I love the color combination, but I'm a huge fan of options and versatility. And this palette just brings it, whether you're a neutral lover or you love to have a pop of color, a hint of color, whatever that is, this palette gives you it all. I really, I, clearly, I really like it. And last for me are lips. And this has been a totally mixed bag for me this month. In fact, the stuff that I've kind of been reaching for offhand, I wouldn't say are favorites. They've just been kind of close by. So I want to talk about the thing that surprised me the most. Um, it's the L'Oreal Color Reese Shine Lipsticks, I guess. This is the shade Glossy Fawn, which I'm wearing today. And I sat on these, guys. They sent me what I think is all, if not a good portion, of the collection, the shade selection that they offer here. And it was in the middle of the move, and I was overwhelmed, so I just kind of got them organized and put away as quickly as possible. Didn't take the time to swatch or like learn what they were all about until I reached for them trying to complete, you know, a look. I was just kind of pulling at stuff that I had. Pulled one out, was like, yeah, sure. Again, it's that thing where I put it away subconsciously to make myself choose something new. I, I don't know. But anyway, I reached for it and was floored at how comfortable they are and how intense the pigment is. Again, I mean, this is glossy fawn, so you're not gonna see a dramatic shift from my natural lip color, but the pigment is definitely there. And because they have that balmy finish, I just think it makes the lips look so healthy, but without like an overly glossy shine and your hair doesn't stick to it nearly as much as it might a gloss. So you get the shine, the pigment, the comfort, but without the stickiness of a gloss. That of course also means they're not super long lasting, but I worth it, I think, for how they look and feel. And that's about it for the stuff I've been loving this month, guys. Um, as usual, I always love to hear what you have been loving or what you've been leaving. I actually have a couple of fails. You can watch the past few videos if you wanna see those rather than mentioning them here. There have been some fails, but this is just what I've been liking. Let me know what yours are in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye guys.